Alright, I'm gonna try something new. I've been uh, recording games, which is fine, but I'm feeling really productive. I want to code something. I want to code a website. That's what I want to do. I want to program a website because I've been doing a whole bunch of programming of websites in work and I've had a bunch of ideas for websites over the years, but I've never had the, the skill set to make them. Now I do. So I'm going to do it. And I figured maybe if I record the process, it'll be educational, um, both to me and to anyone who watches. Maybe it won't, but we'll see. Um, so the website I'm going to make is called Parallel Stories. It's an idea I had a few years back for a story writing website. Like choose your own adventure books, basically. Um, except each user can contribute a new choice for a page. So let's say you have page one is like, you wake up in bed, right? And then at the bottom of it, you would have like, to stay in bed and sleep a little while longer, turn to page two. Or to get up and have some breakfast, turn to page three, right? That's like what well, your classic choose your own adventure kind of... Uh, layout was that was the formula and then you would keep choosing pages until you reach the end of the story um so i want to do that but i want the users to be adding the new pages so that you can have these branching stories that will just um continually grow outwards so i've been thinking about this idea for years uh, finally gonna actually try and make it. I did make a version a few years back, which was okay, but I'd never done any web development in my life back then. Um, now it's, you know, it's my job, so... I'll probably do a better job of it, is the theory. Uh, we'll see, but I should do. I understand web development a lot more these days. So, yeah, anyway start off with, I'm going to do all the basic setup stuff with my screen recording software just to check it's working because you never know when you're doing stuff like recording full screen. You just never know if it's going to work. But for now, we'll do a really basic video where we're just going to create the solution and potentially create one of the projects and get it to build. I know that doesn't sound exciting, but this is just the first video, so... And anyway, you need to start off simple, right? That's the programmer's motto. Keep it simple, stupid. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep it simple. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project, which is going to be a SQL Server database project. And we're going to call it membership.db, right? So this is... Our project is a SQL project, so it's pure database, and it's going to contain all of our database definitions for the membership of users. So we're going to have, everyone who logs into our site is going to have a user account. Seems pretty simple, but when you're designing designing this shit, um, you really need to come at it from, from a low level, you know. So, membership DB, our solution is going to be called parallel stories because that's what the website is going to be called we won't create a directory for the solution we will create a directory for the solution i guess All right now we can hit okay uh yes and there we have it right we have membership db it's a sql project nothing special about it whatsoever So, what we can do is, we can add, we're going to add our first table. It's going to be a super basic table, but it's going to, when we build, it's going to write this table to our database. And then we'll be able to start populating it. But for now, we're just going to make the table. And it's going to be our user table. Is it going to be our user table, or is it going to be our account table? Let's call it the account table just because it sounds a bit more professional user could be anything um, so we've got account so this is our database kind of setup table 
um, setup page. So we've got an ID. This is our primary key, which means it's the value that you use. It's the unique identifier for each user in the database. So for each account, they will have a primary key, which is you can go to that database table and you can say, get me the row with this primary key and it will bring you it back. So you want it to have, they, they suggest int, but int isn't very good because if you have int, you're limited to like 655 rows maybe. Yeah, 655,000 rows or 65,000 rows. One of the two. It's it's big, but it's not infinite, you know? So what you want is a unique identifier, which is a GUID, which is spelt GUID, and it stands for, is it guaranteed unique? ID or is it um, globally unique ID? It doesn't really matter, right? The point is a GUID is made up of so many random characters that the chances of generating the same one as someone else is like there's more stars in the universe than there are possibilities. Something like that, right? It's something crazy. So a GUID is generally guaranteed to be unique. That's why it's called a GUID. So you use those for your IDs because every account has to have a unique identifier, no matter what. Right? Some people would say your account name could be the primary key for an account because you can't have two people with the same account name. But in general, I would say you want to use a unique identifier because you never know what you're going to do later down the line and that guarantees it's unique. Then as your second column, you have username. The username we're going to assume is going to be an email address. So we're going to make it 254 characters, which is the maximum length an email address can be. And then the password, which will be encrypted when we, when we store it, but it's not yet. Now, I'm not sure what kind of encryption we're going to use, so I'm just going to make this 254 just to keep them, keep them equal. And you're not allowed nulls on either of those. What a null means is, basically, is, is there allowed to be no value when you create a row? So when you create someone with an ID, you have to fill in these two as well. You could have a third one that was like uh, age, right? And you can make age be an int. You wouldn't do age. It's a bad example. You'd do birthday or something. But if that's nullable, it means that when you create an account, you do not have to specify your age. Right? That's what that's what allows nulls means. Uh, default means if you don't provide it, it's going to give you a default. But we don't want we don't want age right now. We want username. We want password. And we want. What else do we want? We don't really need much at the start, that's the thing. For now we'll stick with username and password, right? Because we need to do the do the login stuff. So there we have account.sql. I think someone's playing bagpipes next door. That's what I get for living in Scotland. Okay, uh, so now we have our account. What we can do is... Go away. Wow, those bagpipes are going to get real annoying real quick. Uh, we can publish to a membership DB and we want to target a database. Now the server we want is my local server which is, don't ask me why, Enrico PC and then it's SQL Express. Okay. We'll save that profile membership db dot publish yes I want to replace it so then when we hit publish let's see what happens <clears throat> it's creating the database script it's executing the script and it's published it okay 
So we can check that here. If we refresh our database, if we refresh our databases, we disconnect and then we reconnect okay good <laughs> that was a bit weird here we go membership.db underscore one and we have dbo account this is our table we can select that <laughs> those bagpipes are really distracting um, and there we have it. So this is our script for getting everything. It's just your standard SQL server stuff. And you can see we've got ID, username, and password. And we've got no, no actual lines in it. But what we could do is we could go file. This is just to test it. New query. We could do insert into dbo.account. God, I always forget how you do this. It's like insert, and then you go like, uh, God, how'd you do this? It's been so long. I always just look up this shit. <clears throat> so that's what we'll do. We'll look it up. SQL insert. And... Trump. Come on, search. Because I, I can't be bothered remembering this shit when you can look it up so easily, you know? Insert into. I thought that's what I did. Insert into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is a really good website, by the way, if you need, like, info on how to do something. Yes. Okay, cool. So, we can do, we want to do it from here, really. Can I do a new query? Membership DB1, yeah, okay. I think that's why, I think I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it on, on the, on the root. So, I can do, Insert into dbo dot account. Uh huh. And then it is kind of funny that I'm looking stuff up in this video. But this is supposed to be just a raw development video, you know, and that's what I do all the time. Anyway, so what do we need? We need a username and a password. So we can go username password yes and then values and then we can do like test account a test password a Right. So what you're supposed to do is format this a bit nicer. You're supposed to do it like this shit. You do it like that. Because then you can also do test account B. Test password B. You see? And then if I run that, Can I insert? No, I didn't. I didn't ask it to. Do I have to do that? There are more cop. Okay. So, what is this complaining about? Did you notice we did not insert any number into the customer ID field? I did notice that. Customer ID column is automatically updated 
with a unique number for each record in the table. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So why isn't this working? I shouldn't need to specify ID. Cannot insert null into column ID. I do have it set as the primary key, right? Guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why, you'll find a lot of these videos are going to be me debugging weird shit. It's just my uh, development style. It gets the job done. <sighs> why would this not be working? Try it myself. Yeah, okay. Run SQL. Insert into the database the three columns with the values for the three columns. That is literally what I've done. That is what I've done. Hmm. This is the problem. Insert to new query. So what's this going to say I should be doing? Interesting. So this is saying I should be Well, it's complaining, isn't it? Do I have to add it like here? Like, uh, test username, test password, maybe? I tend to freestyle a lot of my development. Yeah, I didn't think so. How am I supposed to specify? God, I'm going to have to Google this. SQL auto create ID. Maybe it's because it's a GUID. Maybe it's because it's a GUID. Unlike identity, a default constraint must be used to assign a good value to a column. So what that's saying is that this is a load of nonsense. I didn't need that shit. But here, I should be doing like ID. And then I should be doing, let's see. I should be doing like new ID. I didn't think I had to do this, but I guess because it's because it's GUIDs, you do. Anyway, that worked. So now we can go select top thousand rows, and you can see we've got our two accounts. They've got the unique identifiers, they've got their usernames, and they've got their passwords. Nothing too amazing there. However, you did get to see me debugging the fact that I did not understand SQL Express. Anyway, I'm going to upload this. I know it's a bit of a weird one, but I think
think it's pretty funny. So we'll see if anyone watches it and is interested, you know. Um, I think it's going to be quite cool developing, and I've never thought of recording myself developing before, but why not? People are recording themselves doing everything these days. Anyway, next time we'll create some more of the projects, and we will start hooking them up so that we can uh, actually populate that database with information and pull it back out. See what else uh, we need in that table. I might even put together some sort of a diagram about how the website should be set up. But we'll see. For now, peace mofos.